Lord, God bless you. It's so good to be back with you on this June 19th, 2024. Today is Juneteenth. A lot of people were off today. It was a federal holiday for the first time, and we certainly are grateful to God for allowing that to come to pass. And so we're just so happy that you have taken time out to share with us on this prayer is series. This series of messages that we bring to you every Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock. We are so glad for those who are uh, tuning in, those who are watching, those who are sharing the videos. We are so grateful to you. It, it has been beyond our wildest uh, ambitions or thoughts. Uh, that this would be such a successful series of messages. Uh, but we want to continue to give you the Word of God straight out the Bible, uh, not with uh, my thoughts or not with anyone else's thoughts, but what is God trying to speak to the people. And the only way we can find it out is by reading His Word and letting the Word speak for itself. I want to Thank Chapman Philip Freeman, my son, for coming on last week. My son in the ministry, my biological, one of my biological sons. And I just thank God for him. He did a very good job on last week. But we are back this week uh, uh, to present another message in the series of messages on prayer is. Luke chapter 18 is the text of scripture we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at the first eight verses. Let us see. Uh, what is being said by uh, the Son of the Living God uh, concerning prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse number 1 through 8, uh, the verses read as such, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men all ought always to pray and not to faint, seeing there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regardeth him, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But after a while he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard uh, man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust just said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I will tell you uh, that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And I just want to look at tonight about prayer and how men and women boys and girls ought always to pray and that prayer that we pray should be a constant petition to God we should have our hearts minds souls and spirits uh, directed towards uh, being able to stay in contact with the master of the universe prayer we must understand is is part of our relationship to God and for us to have a strong relationship we must petition the God of our fathers we must go to him and ask him to lead us ask him to direct us and we need not weary thinking that because we pray every day of the week uh, two, three, four times a day, whatever it may be, that no matter how much we pray, that we will weary God. Uh, for the Bible makes it clear to us that we ought to always pray and thank not. There are several scripture verses I can give you tonight uh, that, that speak on the same subject, that prayer is necessary for the people of God, is necessary for us in a world such as this because we cannot do it on our own we we, we have not the, the 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 physical power or the physical prowess uh, to be able to take on satan and the 
uh, principalities and powers and evil uh, wickedness that prevails in this society. Uh, when I look at some verses, I, I want to look at some verses here tonight real quick uh, that, that continue to tell us that men always ought to pray and to faint not. When I go to Romans chapter 12, I go to Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12, and the Bible says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Instant. Continuing, continuing, automatically. I like that word good too. Automatically in prayer, instantly in prayer. It ought to be our main objectives and our main thoughts are to go to go to God in prayer in good times, in bad times, doing ups and downs. That no matter what we what we are dealing with, we need to call on our heavenly Father and 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 seek Him, seek seek His directions, seek seek His. My God Almighty, seek His Word by 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 praying to Him and letting Him speak to us, and letting His Word speak to us, and understanding that prayer is the key to the kingdom, and faith unlocks the door. You say, "Well, Pastor Freeman, give me another scripture." All right, I'll give you a, another scripture. Ephesians chapter six and verse. Number 18, and he was talking in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17, about putting on the whole armor of God. We talked about that several weeks ago, putting on the whole armor of God, being steadfast with the armor of God on. Then in verse 18, he says, praying always with all prayer, watch this, and supplication. And supplication, how are we going to do it? In the spirit, and watching therewith unto with all perseverance, and supplication for all saints. Paul is talking to the saints and not the sinners. He's saying if you are a child of God, you should pray always. With all prayer and supplication, but pray in the spirit. The Bible says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. The supplications, what we need, his, his, his uh, providence, his, his mighty uh, care of us. It's his job to care for us. But he wants us to approach him and to do it in the spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let me look at another scripture real quick. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2. It says, continue in prayer. Here's the, here it is again. Continue in prayer. Instant in prayer. Always praying in prayer. Men are to always pray and not faint. He says here, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Watching. Praying. Oh, I want you to listen to me tonight. And understanding that we need God and we've got to talk to God just like we talk to anybody else that we love. Just like we talk to anybody else. We spend more time begging other folk and we forget that God is the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I can't get no amen in here. We spend more time belly aching and crying about what we don't have, but yet and still prayer is the avenue for us to approach God and, and God will take care of us. 
I don't know how how much more I can say it, but prayer is is one of the most essential portions of the walk of the believer in Christ. Read your Bible and be strengthened, have your faith strengthened by the word, and then pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to continue to allow you to be in position to do his holy will. Let's go back to Luke 18 again. Luke chapter 18, verse number 1, And he spake a parable unto them. What is a parable? Parable is simply Jesus using common items, common things on the physical level to express a spiritual truth. In other words, when he spake to farmers, he talked about farming. When he spake to other folk, carpenters and different ones, he talked to them on the level that we were. He used what they knew to get them to understand the spiritual principle he was trying to teach. And when you look at Luke chapter 18, you must understand that you got to go back to chapter 15 to get the context uh, that he was talking to publicans, sinners, Pharisees, scribes, and he was speaking to them in parables. He used several parables in 15 through 18 to speak on different subjects. But in this particular text, what we're looking at tonight, uh, he now is speaking on prayer and he's using this parable to teach them a truth. Let's see what the parable is. What is the parable Jesus is saying? Look at verse number 2, Luke 18, 2. He says, saying, there was in a city a judge, watch this, which feared not God, neither regarded men. Uh, this judge in the parable uh, had no fear for God. Didn't regard what man had to say about anything. He was a most useful tool for the devil. Because anyone that don't fear God is certainly not a friend of God. Anyone that don't fear God is certainly not a friend of the church. Anyone who doesn't fear God is not a is not a saved person. And so here we're dealing with a judge that feared not God, neither regarded men. Look at verse 3. And there was a widow in that city. A widow, a woman that had lost her husband somewhere along the way in her life. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Apparently someone had done something to her. The Bible does not go in specifics. But someone had done something to her that she felt like the only way she could be recompensed in the situation was to go to this unjust judge to try and get some relief uh, through the court system. This is what she's doing here, according to this parable. Avenge me of mine adversary. Take vengeance, he's saying. Take vengeance against my enemy. My adversary, adversary, my enemy. Now watch, watch how this judge deals with, with, with this widow lady. It doesn't say she was poor. It doesn't say she was rich. It just says she was a widow in the city. It doesn't even say what city it was. But Jesus is using generalities to teach us a specific spiritual principle that we, might, that we need to understand. Look at verse number 4. And he would not for a while. Watch this. But he would not for a while but after a while he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, put verse 5 with it, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuing coming she weary me. Uh, this unjust judge, this unbeliever in Christ, was not going to take her case. 
he was not going to hear her plea. But after a while, he said within himself, he, he, he said the same thing that Jesus said about him. He said, though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because his widow troubleth me, yet because his widow is getting on my nerves. <laughs> I will venture. Watch this. Lest by her continually coming, she worried me. I'm going to avenge her because she is persistent. Here's the first lesson. This this widow was persistent in her petition. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. She was persistent in her petition to the judge, in her, her, her petition to get her case heard. She was persistent. She said, I'm coming every day till I get an answer. And here's what Jesus is trying to teach. Jesus is trying to teach you should never stop praying. You should never faint. You should never say, I give up. You should never say, God didn't hear me. You should never say, I know it's the Lord's case. You should always press forward in prayer. This widow woman, she pressed forward. And she pressed forward because she believed in her heart. And, 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 and this amounts to her faith. Her faith was that if I continue to go to the judge long enough, he'll hear my case. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't heard this. Y'all ain't heard the spiritual truth Jesus is trying to teach. He's trying to teach us that, that God the Father, the maker and creator of all the universe, is always hearing the case or the cases brought before him. And Jesus Christ is making partition for the church on behalf of us. We have got to be instant in prayer. We've got to always pray. And we must not faint. Look at verse number 6. And the Lord said, Who's the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, He's still talking. Jesus is still talking the parable. Hear what the unjust judge saith. He said, listen, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, sinners, publicans, all of you listen. He said, hear what the unjust, uh, unjust judge said. Watch verse number 7, 1870, 1870. And shall not God, listen to me, here's the question he put to these heathens. And shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. He said God listens to the prayers of his own people. He listens to the prayer of the elect. He listens to the prayer of the believers. He listens to the prayers of his chosen people. He says, and shall not God avenge his own elect? In other words, if the unjust judge could avenge the widow, our God being loving and being a just God and being a merciful God will avenge us. The Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He didn't ask you to go out and try to get revenge on anybody. Oh, I'm talking to somebody out there in the, in the audience tonight. He didn't tell you to go out and get revenge because someone have done something to you because you have lost a loved one because things are not going your way because you got a supervisor don't act right because things are not going right in the church. He never told you to get revenge on anybody. He said, turn it over to me and I will avenge the elect. He said the elect cry day and night. What's the best example that I can think of? How about how about the Israelites in Egypt? Oh, that's a beautiful example. What about them crying day and night that they were in the in the pits, uh, making bricks, building pyramids, doing slave labor in a land where they were treated cruelly. But yet they cried out to God. And God sent a deliverer in the name of Moses. 
He said, Moses, go tell Pharaoh. What did he tell him? To? He said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, well, I can't speak. He said, let your brother Aaron do the talking. I'm giving you a rod. And when you raise that rod, look God Almighty, that rod is the authority of heaven. Look God Almighty, I can use that rod. That rod whoo, can bring water out of a rod. That rod can turn water that is bitter into sweet. That rod, that 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 avenue of power and authority with God, even though the Israelites in the wilderness walked around forty years in circles. After a while, God delivered a certain number that had not been been disobedient to Him and His will. And let the younger generation go over into Canaan land. Didn't even let Moses. Said Moses you look at. You stand here and look. But because of your sin. Because I told you to speak to the rock. And you hit it. With the staff. And did not speak to it. You neither Aaron are going over. Into Canaan land. But Joshua and Caleb led the country. Into Canaan. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which day and night cry unto him, though he be along with them. Look at verse 8. I will tell you, I will, I tell you that he will avenge them, what? Speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Hebrews 10.37. I want to look at it real, real quick. Hebrews 10, 37. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 35, bring it down. Listen to what, it's, listen to what the writer said. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, and after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Oh, my God. Can I put two verses to it, 38, 39? Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them which draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Children of God, always persevere. The children of God, never quit. Never give up. Never go backwards. Always praying. Always understanding that God will speedily avenge those who call on their name. But Jesus raised a question at the end of this prayer. Don't miss his question. He said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Jesus said, oh, you need faith. You need faith in God. You need faith in Jesus Christ. You need faith enough to call on God and to know that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith is the key to the kingdom. Prayer is the key to the kingdom. Faith unlocks the door. God bless you. Always pray and do not faint. That's the key principle tonight as we close out on this another session of our prayer year series. We say may God bless you. Continue to enjoy your holiday today and may heaven smile on you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord.